What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and of course you already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday and yes, Real Talk Wednesday. I am looking a hot ass mess. Like for real. Okay. Either way, here nor there. It's First of all, let me tell you something. I have not put on makeup in like two days. Was it two days? Yeah, I think it's been like two days. Because I just didn't feel like it. Like on some realness, I just really didn't feel like it. I was trying to relax for the past couple of days. And not even relax like that, but not really do anything. You know what I mean? Like when I say not, any, not really do anything, by that I mean not do no videos, like not record any videos, not put on any makeup and just sit down in my little wig sewing chair. And I call it that because it's part of the couch, but it's separated and I'm the only one that really sits there. And if somebody else is sitting there, you better be making a damn wig. Cause like all my little supplies is right on that little table or underneath the table on a little cubby thing. So I just call that my little wig making chair. But anyway, that was my intentions. And so I did somewhat of that, but I just really did not feel like putting on makeup today. So the most that I did, because I had to bring um, my daughter to her dance class, I did put on my eyebrows and some eyeliner. And that's it. And a wig. Oh, yeah, and I put on the wig. And I really didn't even put it on like that because... I really didn't even feel like doing anything to it. As you can tell, I just really didn't feel like doing anything to it. And in case you're wondering, this is the Dominican Blowout Relaxed Wig. I will be posting up a video on that, um, on this wig on, let's see, let's see, on Sunday, this coming Sunday. So like, yeah, I have a schedule. I had to make myself a schedule for each video, for each person's video, for each video that I need to record, each video I've edited. Because if I don't, I just started doing this. If I don't, I get very behind. And then I'm sitting here like, hmm, who should I put up first? So I feel like this. I make myself a schedule and it has the dates and, and the days of the week. And basically it says what company it's for, what wig it's for, etc., etc. And that that's what I do. So, this just seems like it works for me. So, that way somebody doesn't have to email me and be like, well, where's my video? Why you ain't put my video up yet? Oh, man, 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 man. Shit like that. Because I really don't like nobody bothering me. Okay, so, yes. That is what I've been doing. And also, uh, my daughter Tati, my, the oldest, my eldest daughter, she's, in the, she's the eldest, the second eldest. She took me on a little spa day with um, her and I went. I think it was like Thursday. I know it was after Real Talk was um, last week. So it has to be like Thursday or Friday. So she invited me to go get my feet and nails done. Which I did. And I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to see my feet. But she got my nails done as well as hers. Hers are much longer. So these are what my nails look like. And the white one is like some kind of ombre sparkle glitter. But he didn't really do it like the picture, but you know what I mean? So, of course, they are really short. And I needed them short because if they're not short, then I'm not going to be able to um, make my wigs. It would be hard for me to pick up and sew my wigs. So, I needed them really, really short. They're a tiny bit longer than my own nails would be. My own nails always seem to, like, break off. So, it looks like I got little old lady hands. Um, but yeah, so I got that done and I'm so happy about it because you guys know I really never have my nails done like that. So, and it's easy for me to sew. So I tried to get something, um, like a neutral kind of color. But it looks like it's growing out and it's not even been a week, you know. I wasn't really impressed with that place because my feet still felt dry and rough after, afterwards. And yeah. And so then yesterday she took me out. We went to um, Tanger Outlets, the outlet mall, or the outlet strip mall, and she was like, well, you need to go get a new wallet, and I just was like, okay, and she said that because she had actually, I'm trying to find it, she had actually purchased a wallet for me when she was pregnant with my grandson, um, Tinky Doodles, and I'm trying to find it, but... I don't know where it is right about now. And I, I know, I keep everything. 
I keep everything. Like I have my old coach wallet here. Um that I really did love. And all it needs is a good cleaning. But anyway, she bought me this fossil wallet like um two years ago. Has it been two years? And I don't never throw any receipts out until I really, really need to throw them out. So she surprised me that day because I was getting my feet done like a massage that she had paid for. And she came back with a fossil wallet. So this is it right here. And I loved it because it had lightning bolts on it. It was so different. And it was I just carried this with me wherever I went. And it started getting wear and tearing on it because my grandson would bite it up. Or the zipper stopped closing all the way because I would have it over stuff. So she basically said I needed a new wallet. And I was like, okay, whatever. So we went and we went. We went to Michael Kors. And you guys know me really well. I do not really care for Michael Kors like that. Only because I see so many people with the damn Michael Kors bags that got the MK logos all over the entire bag. And that just irritates my skin. Like, I understand that's what you may like, but I cannot stand those bags. Like, everybody in Arizona and their grandmother and even their little pet dog probably got those bags with the MKs all over. And me, personally, I really don't like to advertise that much. Like... I don't know. The MK thing just throws me off a lot because Gucci already started that. Louis Vuitton and Fendi already been had that. And so did Coach. And then Michael Kors comes out later on in life with his own version of a bag. And it's got MKs on it. So to me, it's kind of like a knockoff. And when I see the MKs, it just makes me feel like it's a knockoff bag. I don't, and I know it's probably not. There are some that are. But it just drives me crazy. I cannot stand those bags. So it's kind of like turned me off a lot from the brand itself. But we did go on a Michael's Core store, and there was a lot of nice wallets that were not MKs. And it was so funny because the young lady in there that worked in there, when she walked in, she said, what are you interested in? And I told her, a Michael Kors wallet, but without the MKs. She's like, you don't like? What about the MK?" I said, I cannot stand those bags with the imprints all over. I just don't like them. She high-fived me because she worked there, and she was like, I think they are so tacky. And they just they just scream tackiness. I said, and they look like knockoffs. She said, you are so right. Wow, at least somebody agrees with me. So, I mean, that's just my take. So, if anybody has one of those bags that's watching this, please don't feel offended because we are all entitled to our own opinion. But anyway, we went to the Michael Kors store, we went to the Fossil store, and then we went to the Coke store. They had no Louis Vuitton store over there. But I ended up getting this one right here because it's kind of like double the size. It's the same length. But it's bigger. It has two compartments. Like, you know what I'm saying? Which is even better for me because now I don't have to shove cards behind cards. Because there's like two of these, what have you. So, I'm good. And then, um, it doesn't have the C's all over it. Because, like I said, I'm really not like... Like, this my coach wallet. This was cool for back in the day, like a few years ago. And I still do like this one. But, um, and I just... I think I've outgrown all of that. You know what I mean? So anyway, I got one of these to put on it because it's like the new trend. So cute. So that's what she did for me. And also, if you guys cover Walgreens, now first of all, I love this stuff. Uh, well, I don't love it, but I love it now. Um, so I've never checked them out but because I've seen them in Ulta all the time. But this is Soap and Glory. And I went to Walgreens because they had like this huge summer sale. And they just started selling this in Walgreens, Soap and Glory, okay? So this was 12 bucks. Let me tell you, this is the Peaches and Clean, Peaches and Clean 4-in-1 Wash Off Deep Cleansing Milk. This stuff is like so good on your skin. It makes it feel so soft. You can wipe off your entire face with this, meaning it melts away your makeup. And it has a really, really refreshing scent for all skin types. Also, I bought this. This was $4.99. It was a smaller one. And this is their face soap and clarity vitamin C facial wash. Really, really good stuff too. It also cleanses your face. Three in one daily detox. Smooths and cleans and purifies. So I've only bought the small one because I wanted to see what it was like. It was $4.99. I wasn't really going to spend 15 bucks. So $4.99, really, really worth it. And for $4, which was on clearance, because Walgreens is having like a huge clearance now, getting rid of a lot of things. Um check them out i got the number seven beautiful skin um cleansing water and i got this for four bucks it's normally like eight and some change or nine but four dollars so and it smells really really good and i really really like it. it's kind of like rose water if you guys know i love rose water so yes try it out so anyway that's about it for my life updates because you know you guys i always do update you guys on that and give you the latest tea on where you can purchase some cool stuff 
and yeah let's get on to this real talk if you have a real talk video that you would like to do about your life situation meaning yourself you can always send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com and please post in the subject line real talk and if you want to change the name to someone different in the email like your name is april but you don't want anyone to know it you can go ahead and change the names and let me know in advance other than that let's get on to this real talk y'all So before I even start this off, yes, I got me a big glass. This is not even a glass. This is a wide mouth jar. You know, you can drink out of these. And this is a screwdriver. It is vodka and orange juice. And it's really good. So I'm really excited about this real talk this week because it's actually by a male, a man. So it's really so strange because he actually emailed me on my Gone With The Wind wigs at gmail.com email which actually he went through he had to go through my website going with the wind wigs to get to that because there's no way you can just email me on there because nobody knows about it unless you click the contact us page on going with the wind wigs and you write me an email and it'll send it to me so it's not like a public email address I mean I guess it is now but I'm not really sure how that even came about with him sending me an email through Gone With The Wind Wigs or whatever. But either way, you know what I mean? I let him know that I would do the video because I really don't get too many men um, emailing me. So I just kind of basically like forwarded it over to my own self. So yeah, so let's begin. Hi April, I'm sorry to bother you but I'm a man who's, who's watching all your videos. You are so real with all the great advice and I decided to try and ask for your help because I think you are extremely smart. Okay. I'm going to try to keep it short. You can use my real name. I don't care. And the person I'm going to talk about is not watching YT anyways. I met Jane three years ago and we fell in love very fast. We never had any issues until it came to faith and personal beliefs. She comes from a very conservative Christian family. They go to church every Sunday and even during the week. They pray before eating or drinking anything. When the Pope is on the TV, they go crazy, kiss the screen, and do all the crazy prayers out loud. They don't touch alcohol. To me, they are just insane. I respect other people's beliefs, but this is too much for me. As you can probably tell, I am an atheist. I've always been and I don't need to believe in anything other than being a good human and help other people. Jane knew about it from the beginning and she never complained. We just tried to avoid going to her parents and we never discussed faith. Okay, here comes the issue. I proposed last month and it was in Paris. Very romantic and like really the best day of our lives. She was so happy and you can tell she's been waiting for this day. As soon as we came back to London and she told her family, things started to get really ugly. She came back and told me, Babe, we're going to get married in the church and you must be baptized and become Christian like me and my family. I said, no way. I don't believe in any God. I don't want to fake it. I tried to convince her to get a civil marriage in the office, but she said she always dreamed to do it properly in the church in front of the God and her family. She even said that she's been ashamed all this time that I don't believe in God and that I must be a weak man. April, I don't know what to do. There is no way I will get married in the church and Jane knows this. She's been avoiding me since two weeks. When we speak, she's asking, did you change your mind? Will you try to believe for me? She moved back with her family. I love her, but I don't want to do anything against my own self. There is no way I will ever change my mind. And Jane says the same. I love her so much, but, the, but she is really pushing me away, and we both see no compromise. Aren't Christians supposed to be understanding and forgiving and stuff? Sorry again, I'd rather be there with you smoking some weed, having a drink, and doing a real talk than bother you online. I just think we are so similar, even though I'm a man. Can you do a real talk and maybe other viewers have the same situation? Thank you, Brian. 
So, Ryan, okay, you know what? I wish you were here with me, too, because, listen, I got some weed, and I got this bomb, okay? And you already know, I got me a drink right here. So, what's cool about this is, you know what? First of all, he's a man, and he's kind of like me. I'm, I feel the same way. Like, I never knock anybody's beliefs or faith in anything, but I, this is how I feel. If that's what you believe in, then I'm happy for you. If you like it, I love it. But I really don't need anybody stressing me out to become any kind of believer in anything other than what I believe. This is my belief. And maybe some people don't believe in what I believe. But I believe, to me, that there is a God. It may not be the God that's in the Bible. It may not be a God that everybody talks about. But what I believe is there is a higher power than all of us. And there is something in this universe that makes the world go round. Okay? It may not even be a male person as a God. You really just don't know. It may not be a human being. But I believe the same thing. While we're put here on this earth... Believe in yourself and believe in life and enjoy it, okay? And some people may think that I'm kind of weird uh, in what I believe in, but I've always felt like when we die, we always come back as somebody else. We are always reincarnated. That's probably the reason for deja vu's or just, I. this is my belief and you guys can think about what you believe in. But in my life and in my beliefs and in my feelings, I just feel like sometimes in life we do come back as other people. We just don't know it. You know what I'm saying? How can somebody's soul or life just be ended just like that, you know? So we're put in the dirt and then that's just it. That's the end of it. It's over just like that. I really don't think so. Um, but to me, a lot of people have so many strong beliefs and faith. And that's good because if it makes you feel good about who you are, then by all means, believe in something. We all got to believe in something sometimes just to keep us going, regardless of what it is. You know what I mean? Um, me personally, um, I was baptized as a Methodist. Um, my parent, my grandfather made me go to church as a Baptist as a kid, which I was forced. I don't go to church. I don't, um, I don't pray before I eat. I don't pray before I drink. At night when I go to sleep, um, if that's what you want to call it, I pray. But what I basically do is I lay in my bed and I talk to the higher being, the higher power. And, and I just talk about my day and how thankful I am for life in general and how thankful I am for what little bit of things that I do have because it makes me happy as a person. And I feel like this. I know that there's somebody or something in this world that makes everything capable for everyone. And this is just my strong belief. You know what I mean? It may be God and it may be Jesus Christ and Lord as our Savior, as they would say. However, I have yet to meet that person. And it takes a lot for me. Like, I need to see a lot of things to believe in it. You know what I'm saying? And I just know in my heart that there's something in this world that makes everything capable for all of us. It may not believe what you believe in, because who's to say what you believe in as a Christian is so correct? You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. So, her family is Catholic, obviously, because they're kissing the television screen when the Pope is in town, or, or he's just being advertised on a TV, and etc., etc. If she is such a hard, strong believer in being Catholic, why she moved back with her parents? And I'm asking this because she should have never been fucking live with you in the first goddamn place. If she wanted to get married and she's such a strong Christian or a strong Catholic and she has all of these beliefs and faith and morals, then she should never been fucking living with you in the first place, Brian. And she should have never even been fucking you. I'm pretty sure since y'all was living together, y'all was fucking. I, I mean, I'm just saying. Because if you're going to live up in my house and sleep in my bed every night, you best believe you're going to give me some of that booty. Okay? Man or female, whoever the fuck it is, if you're living in my house, you best believe you're going to give me some of that booty. But her faith and her belief ain't that strong because she already overstepped her boundaries. And I'm wondering, did her parents know that she was living with you? Or where did her parents think she was living at? With her best friend, some girl, or she had her own place? Here's the thing, Brian. It's great to have love, and it's great to be in love. And it can be great to be married, and sometimes it can be 
cannot be great to be married. But you never let anyone, I don't really care who it is, you never let anyone change who you are. Meaning, if this is how you strongly believe that you are an atheist, then you need to remain an atheist, okay? Don't go changing your beliefs and your moral values for anybody. Even if it's for love, if they love you, if they truly respect and love you, then they are going to let you be who you are as a person. Not try to force you to believe in something that you don't believe in or do something against your own will. If that's how they feel and that's what they want you to do, then they're not respecting you as a person and they're not respecting your belief as a person. So... I just feel like sometimes some people put too much emphasis on religion and then they turn around and they do the total opposite of what their religion or their faith has entrusted in them. Just like with your girlfriend, your fiance. She's supposed to be a Catholic and so holier than thou. She shouldn't be living with you, okay? She should not be living with you in the first place. And we know she was living with you because you already stated she went back to live with her parents. So now what is she doing? She's going back home to live with her parents. Is that supposed to be like some basically forceful way of you to change your mind? To have some belief in something that you've never believed in? Forcing you to believe and have faith is like, okay, so bitch, what you want me to fucking do? Fake the shit? Come on, man. I ain't about to fake nothing for nobody. Ain't nobody faking no funk. I mean, yeah, I faked orgasms before, okay? But that was just to hurry up and get the shit the fuck over with because you, you whack, nigga. But I'm not about to sit here in church where I really don't want to be and fake beliefs. You know what I'm saying? And fake how I feel. That's like, you know what? When I used to go to church as a kid, um... Now, let me tell y'all, they will, they will pass around that collection plate like six times, and then you would have to get your butt up and walk to the pulpit or whatever and put in your ties. Like, okay, dang, y'all taking a lot of money from a broke bitch. I'm already broke. God damn. But also, what, what would really, like, freak me out would be, like, one, there would be this homeless guy that would come to the church, and it was this big church, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Flushing, Queens, because I'm from Queens, and I lived in Flushing. So Ebenezer Baptist Church in Flushing, Queens, it was this huge freaking church. And this homeless guy would come in, I think it was, it was every Sunday. I don't know if it was every Sunday, I felt like I was there every Sunday, but he would come in, he would walk down the middle of the aisle and want to just, pr just pray like the rest of the people that were there for you know these women would sit there in the in the aisle and you know in the little chairs or whatever with their big ass chicken hats because that's what they were. They were big ass hats with feathers and crazy shit. Like goddamn, we in a building and y'all bitches got on a motherfucking big ass hat. Like y'all going Easter egg hunting or wherever. Like we in church. Like there is no reason to have this big ass hat on. I can't even see over your your hat. But either way, it seemed like they all would be, like, overly dressed up, sequins, dresses on. Like, are we at church or are we at a fashion show? Are we at fashion week or is this church? I'm trying to figure this shit out. But anyway, they would be talking smack about this homeless guy. They would be sitting there whispering. I don't know what the fuck they were saying, but they were talking about him. You know, I can't really remember what they were saying, but they were talking about this man. And I just thought that was so hypocritical and so fucked up. But not only that, those same women and the other women, they would bust out and start talking in tongues and having the Holy Ghost scare the shit out of me. Like, I don't want to be near that shit. Like, that's the part that would freak me out. Like, is this real or what? Like, I'm trying to still to this day figure out... Is that shit really real? Having the Holy Ghost Spirit? Like, I'm trying to figure it out now. Or did you guys get paid? Y'all getting a part of those tithes and shit? I'm really trying to figure that shit out. I mean, I'm just, I, I just don't really know how possible it is for something like this to happen to anybody. But And sometimes it'll be like the same woman. Like, God damn. Y'all is really blessed. Blessed, blessed. That y'all always got this spirit in you. And then you know what? I don't think I would really want that kind of spirit in me. Because that would just seem like possession. Which is evil. If something takes over your body, that's supposed to be evil. So I'm just saying. I really don't know. And the things that I have read in books. Okay? Lots of things that I have read in books. 
about what the meaning of church really is, what the meaning of the cross really is. It's all type of things that you can read and look up. If you don't believe me, you can look it up for yourselves. And I'm not trying to, you know, knock anybody's faith, but you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that I have read. It's just not that I just decided not to believe in things, but I do a lot of reading and I have my own beliefs and my own feelings towards certain things in life. However, Here's the thing, Brian. You don't let nobody fucking change you. If y'all can't compromise on this, and this is not little and it's not too big, but it is something kind of big because this is your life and this is her life. And if she can't stand by her man and let him have his belief, then there's really not much else to say. And I don't want to tell you to dump the girl, but I really don't like her actions for one. So she decided to move out and go back home with her parents and not even want to speak to you and then call you up talking about, did you change your mind? Are you going to believe for me? Just do it for me. Like, nah. So that's just like, basically, I'm with some some dude, right? And he's a devil. Where I find out that he he don't, um, I, find, I ain't going to say I found out he's a devil worshiper because then I would just fucking ghost out on his ass like, bye. Peace, deuces, bye, Felicia. But I'm just saying, like, I was some dude, and we cool, you know what I'm saying? We getting along real, real well. And then a few years down the line, I find out that he, um, he done killed a few people, and he wanted to kill some more. And he's like, if you ain't down with it, just do it for me. Just do it for me. But I don't believe in killing nobody. Just do it for me, okay? If you love me, you'll do it for me. Fuck that. So you about to drag me into your bullshit and have me doing some shit that I really don't want to fucking do? How's that supposed to make me feel as a person? I mean, really. Being baptized is a big freaking thing, all right? And I've been there and done that. And I've only been there and done that because my grandparents made me. My grandfather made me get baptized at, like, the age of 13. I think it was, like, 12 or 13. Okay? And it was what I was made to do. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not even what I wanted to do. But being baptized into something that you have no belief in is hypocritical and it's fake and phony. Like, why the fuck would you want to do some shit like that? Just to be with somebody? Like I said, Brian, if she can't fucking respect you for the person that you really are, then that bitch ain't never going to fucking respect you. And it's best that you just separate yourself from her as well. The same way she separated herself from you is the same way you can separate yourself from her. And you could let her know, listen... Jane, I've already made up my mind and my beliefs long before you came along. And I'm not going to change how I feel. If you cannot respect this as who I am as a person, then you truly, honestly do not respect or love me. And I can understand your feelings about faith and religion. Trust me, I can truly understand. But this is how I feel. And hopefully one day, and you can say, hopefully one day you will feel the same way as I do. Until then... I stand my ground. I am not going to get married in the church. I'm not going to be baptized. And I'm not going to have faith or start believing in something that I do not believe in. It's a lie. And that's it. And if she can't get with the program and respect that, then you know what? That's not the type of person you need on your home team. I'm just saying. It's nice to be in love and it's nice to be with somebody. But when they can up and just leave you and disregard how you really feel, then it's not meant to fucking be. Therefore, if it's not meant to be and that's one problem that you see, there's going to be many other more problems that you're going to see in the long run. Yeah, a lot of people, like you said, her family is insane with the Pope thing. And I can attest to that. I, I could truly be on your side about that. And You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with the Pope. I mean, I don't follow him. Um... A lot of people glorify him and things of that nature. And like I said, I'm not knocking anybody's faith or belief because that's on you. And everybody has to believe in something. Just like Brian, he believes in what he believes in. He believes in being an atheist. And he believes in being a good human being. And that's what he believes in. And that makes him feel good about himself. And it feels good about the universe. And that's the same thing and same way that I feel about what I believe in in my faith. And just like Jane as her well as herself and whoever else and whoever else and that's just what it is you know what i'm saying like with my kids my my eldest son he is 24 years old he turned 24 years old well by the time this goes up it'll be yesterday because his birthday is on the 23rd which is on a tuesday and which is so crazy because him and mumsy are exactly a week apart me and my other son wuzzle we are exactly a week apart and tati and my tati and my other daughter name they are two weeks apart but anyway um he believes he goes to he goes to church with his girlfriend, his fiance's family. They're Hispanic, and he believes in Jesus Christ. Now, my um, son Wuzzle, um, 
he's kind of like in between my daughter Tati. She's like me. I've never instilled any of my beliefs on her, but that she's just like me. You know what I mean? She believes in what I believe in. Um, and But then my daughter Nay, who is 14, she believes in Jesus Christ. And you know what? Like I said, I don't knock anybody for their beliefs. And if that's how my children want to believe and have their faith, then they are entitled to that. We are entitled to believing in our faith. And I'm going to tell you guys a story. And I don't know if I've told you this before. But when I first moved here to Arizona, they, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses would knock on my door. And I'm a very polite person. I would never want to curse anybody out. Well, I'm, I'm lying. Hold up. I'm lying. I am a, a polite person, but I'm lying when I said I would never want to curse anybody out. I don't knowingly, willingly want to curse people out. However, if you strike me the wrong fucking way, I will fucking give you a good old tongue lashing. However, um, they would constantly be ringing my doorbell every week. And I would just be like, no, thank you. And I would take the watchtowers because I'm polite and I don't like to be rude to people. And also on top of that, I really tried to turn over a new leaf when I moved to, on the West Coast. I really, really did. So, you know, after a while, it started getting a little bit evasive. They, I just felt like, okay, you know what? You guys are really doing this too much to me now. So I asked him, listen, um, can you just please stop coming to my home because I'm not interested. Uh, you know, this is what I had to tell them. Two weeks later, they came back and I, they sent somebody else. This old white guy came knocking on my door. He had this black guy with him and he was like, is Tatiana here? And I was like, who are you? And he was like, well, is she here? And I'm like, and you are? And he was like, well, I'm with the Jehovah Witness, the um, Kingdom Hall. I said, okay, and what can I do for you? Well, we spoke to Tati a while ago. I said, listen, I already told you guys to stop ringing my doorbell, okay? And I'm not going to tell you again. Tati's not interested and neither am I. Stop ringing my doorbell. Uh, about a month and a half later, this black woman comes and she must have had like multiple sclerosis because she had the... Um, the crutches that are on your arms, I'm not really sure. But she had those and she had this little black boy with her. And this other black ladies were her. Same same thing. Did I go off? Because that was the third fucking time that I told you three strikes your ass is out with me. I went off. I said, listen, take my damn name off of y'all list of ringing doorbells, all right? I already told y'all I'm not interested, okay? I am not interested up in here about what y'all have to offer. No thank you. Well, are you sure? I said, listen, I'm a Muslim. Stop ringing my doorbell. Okay, well, here's a... If I just told you I was a Muslim, why are you giving me that? Even though I'm not, but you know what I'm saying? So, fine. I don't know how they get your house phone number, but it seems like every weirdo in the world has my house phone number. Nobody even calls my house, but this one lady did call my house from Kingdom Hall about some type of drive they were having for charity event. I had to let her know, don't call my fucking house no more. So, you know what? It's like them, they try to be really, really pushy with pushing their religion on you. Um, they're not the only ones that do it, but I think that they're very forceful at it. And like I said, I am not knocking anybody's religion. My good friend, Donna, is a Jehovah Witness, but she's not like that. And she told me the rules already. All you got to do is to tell them to stop coming around, and they won't. But they, they, they kept on until I had to curse them out. and You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I respect her. When I'm on the phone with her because of her religion and her faith, I don't curse. And it's hard for me not to curse because I have a potty mouth, a sailor mouth. But I, I respect her as a person and who she is and her belief and her faith. So, when I'm on the phone with her, I make sure to watch my tongue and just be very polite because she's a good friend of mine and I would never want to insult her or to make her feel like any less and I know that that's not what they like at all is cursing so I try to be Sarah and not April you know Sarah's like the white girl version of me but really really cool yes I try to be her so yes that was my story for you Brian and basically like I gave you that Options, that's what you need to tell her. Don't be anybody other than who the fuck you already are. And listen, have a drink with me, and we don't got to pray over it. We just going to drink the shit, okay? So this is going to be, I'm going to have a sip for you, all right? So, yes, now on to the next topic at hand. Okay, so... Dear April, I came across your channel and I love your makeup, wig, and plus side clothing haul. I admire you because you're headstrong, smart, and funny. I am a 38-year-old mother of three and I have been through a lot. Call me Lisa. 
I met my ex-fiance in our hometown in Michigan. We were engaged for a year, decided to relocate to another city in Michigan. Call him Larry. We lived there for one year. He knew a small handful of people and I knew one, but my aunt. As I started my new job and began to meet new people, Larry became jealous of me and began to have an aggressive temper towards me. I decided to leave him. I moved back to my hometown. I didn't know what I was going to do or where I was going to go. My mother didn't have a big place, but she let my kids stay with her. I slept in my car and at my father's home when we were on good terms. Fast forward a month. I ran into an old crush. Call him Steve. He learned of my situation and asked me and my kids and I would move in with him. He has a daughter. She is sweet, fun, and well-behaved. We became one big instant family. We had fun and we enjoyed each other. His daughter and my kids got, a well, got along well until Steve came home pissy drunk. He had been keeping his addiction of alcohol a secret. I tried to deal with it and I tried to help, but nothing is going to stop him from drinking. Fast forward a few years later, his daughter decides that she doesn't want to be around him because of his drinking and decides to move with her mother. I couldn't take any more either and didn't want my kids to grow up thinking that this is the way an adult is supposed to act. I didn't want my sons nor my daughter to think that this is how a man is supposed to treat a woman. I moved my kids and I into our new home. During that time, Steve, um, Steve said that Steve said to me that he is trying to get himself together. So I let Steve come over to visit. Well, in 2014, I was diagnosed with stage 3 Hodgkin's, lymph Hodgkin's lymphoma. I didn't have much help, so Steve, Steve moves in to help care for me. As I was going through my battle, Steve's drinking became more severe. My mother had to step in and help out as much as she could. I won and beat my battle. The problem is that Steve is still here. He lost his job and he still hasn't gone to get help for his drinking. I must admit that I feel sorry for him and I do love him. How do I cut the chain that he still has on my heart and how do I start dating again? I haven't been on a date in years. What do I do? Poor Lisa. Like, you know what? So, first of all, Lisa's already been through enough. She was de dating this guy named Larry. They moved to another part of Michigan. She had no friends. He knew a handful of people in a little town. She knew nobody but her aunt. She got herself a new job, started meeting people. That's what happens. But he got all aggressive and hateful and shit and jealous. So, she left him and moved back home to her hometown and met somebody named Steve. An old crush. She, she didn't even just meet him. He was an old crush. Well... Short story, she moved in with him, her and her kids. He had a daughter. He hid his fucking alcoholic behaviors <laughs> a secret. And basically, it just takes off from there. She moved out. His daughter got tired of him. She got sick. He moved in with her to help her. Lost his job. He's still a fucking alcoholic. And she just wants to cut the chain and move on. Sounds like somebody that I know really really well which is my ex-husband and I can relate somewhat because I did not know when I first met him that he was an alcoholic and that he drank like I did not know that he kept that shit hidden from me for a long time like very well hidden and I was so unaware of that okay until one night he came home pissy drunk from hanging out with his mother and sister I was so surprised and just running off at the mouth as he was drunk. I was like, wow. And it just seemed like over time, over a period of time, it just kept getting worse and kept getting worse. And now he felt like it was acceptable because he's already let the cat out the bag. And it just started irritating me to the point where it was like, yo, I feel like killing this nigga. Yo, I hate him. Yo, I want to just kill him. Oh, my God. Because I don't like alcoholics. I don't. And as much as you guys may see, and I don't as much as you guys, you have seen me drink enough. In my real talk videos, but let me tell you something. After I sip on this, my drinks don't be that strong. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot, but you think that's a lot? It's a lot more, which is ice and orange juice in there. So as for the vodka, the vodka is probably like right here, and the and the orange juice was all the way up here. 
and then it's ice. So you can't even taste it. Sometimes I do make it a little strong, but here's one thing about me. I don't drink to get drunk because I just feel like, why the fuck would you want to drink to get drunk? I mean, I don't really find... What's the whole concept of that? So you want to wake up sick? You want to throw up? Because when I get drunk, I throw up. And that is... I cannot hold my liquor for shit. So, and even to this day still. And I'm 42 years old. I cannot hold my liquor. I have a horrible tolerance. And that's okay. Alright? That's why I smoke weed. More. Because I can smoke some weed. And sometimes I can't smoke too much weed as well because I get sick and throw up. So, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit different. But... You have already felt like, you know what I'm saying, after they have let the cat out of the bag and you have found out their addiction, it's like, okay, let me try to help you with this. But you cannot force anybody to stop wanting to do what they're going to want to do, especially if they're a grown-up. Even teenagers, they, you're not going to be able to stop anybody from doing what the fuck they want to do. But what you need to do is stop yourself from going along with their fucking chaos. Now... How do you cut the chain? You tell that nigga, listen, you have 30 days. And I'm just being nice because I'm, I'm just saying I would never want to see anybody homeless. But then again, I don't really give a fuck on some real shit. Because you ain't about to be up in my motherfucking house irritating me in my house. Okay? And on top of that, you're not going to be up in my house coming up in here drinking and, and acting drunk and running off at the fucking mouth. That shit I will not tolerate. Never again will I tolerate that. I have had to go through so much shit with my ex-husband because of his drinking. And I have lost so many things because of his drinking that I refuse to tolerate that shit anymore. To me, if you're a grown-ass man, grow the fuck up, okay? Because this is what teenagers and people that just start drinking at the age of 21 do, okay? Young folk do dumb shit like this. Not no grown-ass people. And here's the thing. How you gonna cut the chain? You cut the chain real simple and sweet and let him know, listen, Steve, I really care about you as a person, but you know something? I'm not with the, this. So you have two weeks to find somewhere to live because you're going to have to leave. All right? Bottom line. And, and you don't even have to give him two weeks because it's your house. However, I will let him know he has a certain amount of time to get the fuck up out of my shit. Because I am not going to be irritated anymore by no loser. But here's the thing with you, Lisa. You were talking about you want to cut the chain so you can start dating again. Bitch, first of all, what are you worried about dating again? Yes, we all need a man. Trust and believe me, okay? There are times when I want one too, and I have tried the whole dating thing, and it just didn't work out. So now I'm just like, you know what? I'm just, I'm not done, but I'm done for right now. I'm, I'm trying to chill and find me and find myself. And that is exactly what you need to do. Find yourself. Find your soul. Relax yourself and get into things. Find a hobby. Get to know who you are. Because there are probably things about yourself that you don't even know because you are with the fucking loser. You've left one loser and went to another loser. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Does anybody see me? Hear me? It sounds like my story, alright? Because I left one loser and went to another loser. So when you have two losers back to back, it's time to take a motherfucking break and just say, you know what? I'm going to fucking focus on April or focus on Lisa and I'm going to do me. And though some people may feel like, oh, when you say do you, it sounds selfish. Well, bitch, I'm going to be a motherfucking selfish ass bitch right now because I'm going to do me and I'm going to focus on me. And when I say do me and focus on me, trust and believe that when I'm focusing on me and doing me, everybody is reaping the benefits, okay? From me focusing on me and doing me. Meaning my kids is reaping the benefits. Y'all motherfuckers that's watching this shit is reaping the benefits. Because that way, when I say I'm doing me and I'm focusing on me, I'm giving y'all more videos. I'm focusing on more things to, 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 to push out for YouTube. And I'm just doing more things on the internet. So therefore... Everybody's reaping the benefits. I ain't doing me to be fucking selfish on some whole shit. Like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. So at least stop worrying about a motherfucking man and get rid of the one that you already have that you don't even want in your household. And that is where you will see less problem. And maybe you will find Mr. Right and be able to date again. But until then, you need to get rid of him. And you, until then, you need to focus on yourself. Once you get rid of him, it is time to cleanse your soul. And I've said this in many of videos. Bitches, if y'all got rid of a nigga and he ain't worth shit, it don't even matter if he was worth shit. 
it. Cleanse your soul because there is a lot of built up shit inside of you from that last relationship that is just like rotten. You know how you gotta detox, you know, to lose weight? Detox your soul. Detox that fucking non-purpose nigga out your soul cleanse your soul okay cleanse that non-purpose nigga out of you okay just like you dush dush that nigga out your system on some real shit and focus on you trust and believe when you focus on you a whole lot of good comes into play you know what i'm saying you ain't had to leave one town and one nigga and then go move in with another nigga if you would have fucking cleansed your soul the first round after you left that nigga, and you would have found your own place. You wouldn't have to move in with Steve, you and your kids. Because like I did, I left that motherfucker, my husband, and came out here and had my own shit, okay? So I cleansed my soul for some for some time, and then I just met an asshole. I didn't even meet him. I already knew him. You know what I'm saying? It's my kid's father. But either way, they're here or there. You got to do what's good for you. And the first thing you need to do is get rid of him. Because he's not worth your time. And there's so much more to life than some fucking loser. Knocking down your door. Being drunk. Pissy drunk. Acting stupid and running off at the mouth. Nobody has time for that. I know I don't. Mm -mm. So yes. Let Lisa know what you think. I'm only going to do two today because it is getting late. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. And I will see you guys next week. And stay diva and divalicious. And I love you all. And thanks for staying tuned with my videos. And make sure you check out my makeup line. And as well as that as my latest videos. And I'll see you guys soon. Love you.